Hey everyone, Kachi Vest, we're back to another video for you today. So let's talk about Coinbase and why the market still doesn't understand the company. And that's basically why the stock always takes a hit. Even after they beat on revenue, they beat on earnings per share, they beat on their monthly transacting users, the stock is down. It's a high growth company and it's a profitable one. Yes, for the full year, they might become unprofitable because of all of their investments, but even with those investments, there's a high chance that they will still be profitable. Again, high growth company, profitable, something very, very rare in this market, but the stock always takes a hit. One of the main reasons to that question mark is basically Coinbase is what crypto is doing. So if crypto is going up, Coinbase will go up. Crypto goes down, Coinbase goes down. And if you follow it even closer, basically what Bitcoin does, Coinbase does. But as you saw in previous videos and as you will see in this report, Bitcoin's dominance on Coinbase balance sheets, on Coinbase numbers, is obviously coming down as they add more and more altcoins on the platform as they also grow their other services on the platform. Now we're also going to discuss some future developments such as the NFT marketplace and a Coinbase subscription called Coinbase One, which might suddenly turn the tide for how Wall Street look at the company because with a subscription model, you basically have recurrent revenue, which means you can predict how well Coinbase will be doing and it won't really matter how the crypto market is doing. Because right now, if volatility is high, there's a lot of price movements, it's obviously positive for Coinbase, if that's not the case, that will be negative for Coinbase, even though it's not really that true anymore. So with all that said, earnings per share were $3.32, beating expectations of $1.95. Revenue was $2.49 billion, beating the estimates of $2 billion. Q4 monthly transacting users were 11.4 million versus an estimated 9.8 million. So a huge beat on that front. Now we're gonna have a look at the other numbers and discuss everything else, but first, I want to thank The Motley Fool for sponsoring this video. The Motley Fool is a company that provides investing insight and stock recommendations for investors of all skill sets and risk levels. You all know how much I love researching new stocks and trying to find the next best investment. So I'm proud to partner with The Motley Fool to bring you 10 free stock picks from their popular product, Stock Advisor. Now, Stock Advisor has beat the market by more than 4x. So all you have to do is go to fool.com forward slash couch investor to get your free 10 stock picks now. All right, so first up, I'm obviously going to add Coinbase to this channel's portfolio. I'm here on stockcard.io. If you don't follow the portfolio yet, link it in the description. It's free to follow. Just make sure you click the link, sign up, and it's free to follow if you want to upgrade to a VIP to use this platform to its fullest extent, you can use the code COUCHINVESTOR when you upgrade. It's a very, very good platform with lots of information, but if you just wanna follow the portfolio for free, you can do that as well. So basically Coinbase has high growth potential, strong operations, right now the sentiment is calm. I would have expected it to be a bit pessimistic, but okay, calm is good as well. It obviously underperformed the market, as you can see here on the three month chart, it's down 41%. On the one year chart, it's down 46%. It's an undervalued stock because, well, you can see it right here, PE ratio of 16, price to sales ratio of 6.6. .6. It's growing extremely fast. Obviously 2021 was an incredible year for cryptocurrency and crypto companies that might not repeat this year, but still as of now, pretty cheap. Average analyst price target is $323, basically 100% upside from today. 10 buy ratings, 5 hold, 0 sell. So now with regards to the investment strategy, so possible fit for a buy and hold position, it's in the orange, basically because, well, it's still a new publicly traded company and cash availability is neutral, but all the rest here, the company size, $40 billion, close to $40 billion in market cap, so there's still a lot of room to grow there, growth potential good, sales growth good as well, dividend portfolio clearly not. And then the main reason why this is red bad for a growth portfolio is well because cash availability is neutral and then past investment returns is bad. Since it went public, the stock has basically come down drastically. 
So maybe that's why that will obviously change in the future. For a company size $38 billion, to me, it's good enough, right? It might 10x, it might 5x, might 2x, doesn't matter really. It really depends on how long-term your investment horizon is. To me, this is still pretty good. It's not extremely large, it's not extremely small, right in the middle, the sweet spot. And then you can basically see here who owns on this platform, Coinbase in their portfolio. You can see here the Bryans own it, the SuperArk portfolio owns it, and many others as well. Some of them are also free to follow, so do certainly check them out. All right, now let's jump into some of the numbers they reported. This is the annual number, so annual average retail MTUs, multi-transacting users. They expected between 8 and 8.5 million, came in at 8.4, so that's good. Average transaction revenue per user, high $50, exceeded that $64, then transaction expenses as a percentage of net revenue, mid-teens, 17%, expenses, in line and then sales and marketing also basically in line as well. This is where you can see the huge growth from 2020 to 2021. Basically look at this, 2020 monthly transacting users 2.8, 2021 11.4. I mean this growth is surreal and this will obviously not continue like this. You will still see growth but you won't see continuous 5x, 6x growth across the line here. Just it's not sustainable. I would love to see it but it won't happen. Trading volume as well, almost 10x in a year. Crazy. Assets on platform has reached $278 billion. And then net revenue, net income, adjusted EBITDA, basically 4 to 5x year over year. Just crazy, crazy number, crazy year for Coinbase. And to me, right now, the price is perfect if you want to go long on this one. Obviously, you will still see some fluctuations with regarding to the correlation of the crypto market, Bitcoin and Coinbase until the market starts seeing the real value here that Coinbase is giving. And this is where it gets a bit more interesting. Trading volume by retail and institution. So retail was in 2020, $73 billion. In 2021, 535 billion. Institutions grew almost 10x from 120 billion to 1.13 trillion. And this is what I meant with Bitcoin having less and less of an influence on Coinbase. A couple of quarters ago, Bitcoin was still high, 38% of the total. Right now we're at 16. Ethereum, 14%. Now we're at 16 as well. And then other crypto assets was 48 and now we're 68. So you can see the growth and basically the path away of just depending on those two one and two spots in crypto. And basically the same can be said for transaction revenue as a percentage of the total. Same story there. And the story continues here. Assets on platform as percentage of total. So first up retail institution, pretty close. 2020 was basically the same thing. 2021 retail a bit more than institutional, but institutional is still very early days and that side of the business will still continue to grow more and more. They will also add derivatives to the platform. So a lot more to come for Coinbase. And now as a percentage of the total, as you can see, Bitcoin going down, Ethereum going up, other crypto assets going up as well, and then fiat basically staying the same overall. And this is what I meant with the institutional side being still very, very early days. You can see the net revenue, the transaction net revenue here for institutional, still very, very small compared to retail. We all know Coinbase has various segments of their business. Subscription and services revenue include blockchain rewards, custodial fee, earn campaign. By the way, if you are on Coinbase, I highly suggest you go and do those earn crypto for $3, $5. You learn something and then you get free money, basically. I do have a link down in the description. If your friends have one, use your friends. If not, you can use mine. It's free anyways. Then there's also interest income and other subscription and services revenue that is also growing quite nicely. And we're gonna talk about the subscription part that I mentioned at first in a bit. But first, operating expenses goes without saying that with huge growth comes even greater expenses, just a Spider-Man joke here, 
but obviously total operating expenses have also increased massively this year. But the company is profitable on a full year basis that generated $3.6 billion in net income and $4.1 billion in adjusted EBITDA. They ended the year approximately with $7.1 billion of cash, cash equivalents, including $3.4 billion in proceeds from long-term debt, which they issued in 2021. So as you can see, record year for the company, extremely good quarter for the company as well. Now with regards to outlook, this is obviously also one of the aspects why the stock is down a bit. As you can see right here, they expect a decline in crypto asset volatility. They've already seen it as well. Basically, if you follow the crypto market, you see it as well. Crypto market capitalization is down 20%, crypto volatility is down approximately 10%, and these factors are contributing to lower trading volumes per retail MTUs, total trading volume of approximately $200 billion, and then retail MTUs have averaged at roughly 10 million. After knowing all of that, they believe that the retail MTU and total trading volume will both be lower in Q1 as compared to Q4. As for the subscription and services part of the business, they have also seen a decline in that. Basically due to the crypto asset price declines in Q1, they anticipate their subscription and services revenue will be lower as compared to Q4. And as for the full year 2022, this is what they expect. Very, very wide range. Because, well, you can really predict what's going to happen in the full year, especially with crypto. And this is also one of the reasons why Wall Street just doesn't trust this company as of today for their performance in the long run, or maybe in the short run, I should say. So outlook for average retail MTUs between 5 to 15 million. If it becomes 5 or maybe even lower, then they said that they probably won't be profitable this year at a negative $500 million, which to be honest, isn't that big of a hit because as we've seen, they have enough cash, they were profitable for a long time. So it's okay to take a hit for once. Average transaction revenue per user, pre-2021 levels, makes sense, unless there's another huge crypto bull market. Subscription and services revenue, strong growth compared to 2021. Now, if I'm being honest, even if Bitcoin or Ethereum aren't going to hit all-time highs again this year, I do think it's going to be a better year than what most expect because the hype is still there. Crypto has become, let's say, mainstream. They will be coming out with their NFT marketplace. We can discuss that in a bit. And with OpenSea, you've seen how huge that is. So the potential is there regardless of what's going to happen with crypto. Bitcoin and Ethereum don't really need to hit all-time highs again. We just need volatility. And unfortunately, we have volatility right now with everything that's going on within Russia and Ukraine. Now let's talk a bit about that Coinbase One and the NFT marketplace. So first they mentioned here the acquisition of FairX. They're basically planting seeds to offer crypto derivatives over time. This is going to be huge. And then they're experimenting with alternative ways for users to engage with their investing products. They're testing a subscription offering called Coinbase One, which offers users zero commission trading, which basically removes one of the bear cases that, well, eventually Coinbase will have to offer zero dollars trading costs, fees, let's say. With this thing, it basically goes against that bear case and suddenly this becomes a subscription business. 24-7 live phone support and a $1 million guarantee against account takeovers for a flat monthly fee. They look forward to learning more about the best experiences they can offer for their customers. So this is certainly going to be interesting and something to keep an eye on. And now with regards to the NFT marketplace, I'm redirecting us to the earnings call. So basically one person asked here from Say Technologies how they plan to beat OpenSea for the NFT market share. First up, Coinbase, Coinbase Ventures is a seed investor in OpenSea. So whatever happens with OpenSea, if they go public one day, Coinbase will benefit from that for sure. Then they talk here about the significant and growing amount of volume across NFT marketplaces today, but the industry is still so small that we see a lot of opportunity for innovation. Emily, which is the president and CEO, said that she believes that this is not a zero sum game they're a huge fan of OpenSea and for their own NFT marketplace, they're also focused on a social experiment, building a community. So that's 
also something to keep an eye on. Unfortunately, they did not give an exact date when this NFT marketplace will go mainstream, but they're working on it. They're going to build it differently than how OpenSea is built. Again, they want it to be as simple as possible, meaning that you have your Coinbase wallet, there is a great project, there is a great community, everything can be done in one app as fast as possible and as secure as possible. Because you've probably seen the headlines with OpenSea project, lots of scammers, lots of hackers, etc. This cannot happen with Coinbase. So there you have it, Coinbase has a lot to offer. There's lots of businesses inside of that company, Coinbase Ventures, the cloud, which basically is going to work a bit like AWS, but for crypto and crypto projects, Web3 as well, the building blocks, the infrastructure, they'll offer that. And then if they see an interesting project, basically use Coinbase Venture to invest in that and they'll probably gain from that as well in the future. So there's lots and lots to uncover with Coinbase. To me, this is probably the easiest way to invest in crypto and blockchain and the future in that without having to pick one specific cryptocurrency. So that will be it for this video. Let me know down in the comments below and leave your thoughts on this quarter, on the company and on the future of Coinbase because I'd love to hear that, the bear and the bull cases. And if you like these types of video, leave that thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed to this channel, maybe hit that subscribe button. As always, guys, take care, stay safe and see you all in the next video. Bye-bye.